Good afternoon, Jason Phillips from Ottawa Praise. We're going through a 1970 VW Type 2 Bus Riviera Edition. Going to jump underneath it first as usual, and we'll get it outside and finish up the rest of the unit. Not too far from Chicago land today, 800-301-3886 if you need a vehicle inspection done. Starting up with the underbody, uh, the forward front frame rails look to be in really good shape. And no evidence of collision. Bumpers have been off it. A little bit of oxidation along these seams. Uh, it probably looks worse in the video than what it really is. Structurally speaking, uh, that's all very sound. Up here there was a die hole in the uh, rail that's been grabbed a hold of and um, has a tear. It's pretty thin steel up there so it was clamped down at some point in time and uh, pulled this way. I'll show you a little bit of the underbody structure and see what we discovered. But inner structure up here is all very sound. Original panels uh, that I can tell. Factory pinch welds along the bottoms all along the uh, fender lip edges inside to outside wheel splash pinch welds and seams all along the uh, splashes are in very nice solid original shape no big patches or anything like that in the wheel splash area torque tube suspension looks to be in good shape tie rod end inner and outer has been changed along this uh, driver's side. If that one's been changed it was just done a while back. Much of the suspension looks uh, pretty original. Found some oil change stickers on the inside of the door that may indicate the miles uh, you know supportive in the 65,000 range uh, but not sure about that. Tire wear looks pretty even and uniform on the front end of the vehicle. Nothing too choppy. Upper uh, ball joints appear to have been serviced at some point in time. And the castle nuts look newer on the tie rods. Probably all of them were changed. But rail-wise, all the structure looks uh, good and sound and stable up front. Let's move back. Behind the driver's side wheel well. Floor pans are in good, solid shape. Somebody had something strung up here with some plumbing strap at one point. But you can see the pinch welds along the lower sill, along the lower rocker. They're in really nice shape. There's no evidence of being swollen or, or uh, affected by heavy deterioration or decay. Unitized rails and all the gussets coming out, they all look nice and solid and appropriate. And all these wheel splashes. Oops, there, there we are. Again, they all um, look really good around the vehicle. Magnet tested all the way around and digital paint meter uh, photo results for the prospective buyer. 250, 300 photos taken. Underneath the back side of the vehicle. Because of that uh, chain down tear, I was looking at the structure up inside here and that looks all very nice and original. Uh, back here this triangular gusset had some drill holes in it. It's been drilled and probably a plate put on it to hold it steady to uh, straighten out whatever needed to be straightened out. Straightened out. But this a whole uh, closeout panel around the back of the engine bay looks original with old sound deadener on it. No evidence that anything's been done there structurally. And this triangular gusset here on the passenger side doesn't look like it's ever been crushed or affected in any way. The only panel I can see that's been changed is up here, this little corner uh, support. It has a part replacement sticker on it probably from years and years and years ago. But that splash uh, looks original. This little closeout panel has been replaced. And again, structurally speaking, looking at the rails coming down both sides, 
they look uh, real nice. I don't see any evidence of wrinkles or weld marks or obvious repairs. I'm on a non-hoisted inspection. I was unable to get a hoist here today, but I've got a pretty good look all the way around it. And if you look straight down there, it doesn't no evidence of collapse or panel change or replacement. So there you have it. The floor structure looks the same down that side. With uh, no obvious concerns to be noted over here. Some of these uh, drilled holes in the floor pan structure were drilled and caulked. Which some of them are probably relevant to the options that were put in the vehicle. But the frame rails look nice and clean and straight all the way down. Inner rocker structure, coming back towards me. Um, looks good and solid and factory. The lip edges look nice. So I'm going to say whatever repair work may have been done here um, wasn't anything drastic and it was probably a long, long time ago. While I'm on the ground, the transaxle uh, case is pretty clean. Those uh, CV shafts, half shafts have been serviced probably. A little bit of oil seepage on the bottom of the motor, gathering a couple drops on the floor there. You want to go ahead and fire it up? I'm out of your way. Go ahead and fire it up, will you? I wanted to hear the engine from the bottom side. pretty good. I'm going to back it out and do the rest of this outside. A uh, few uh, small age cracks in the parking lamp lenses. Those are original. This one's slightly brighter orange than the other. Earlier on, uh, the photos, well, we got two chrome headlight bezels on it now, that's for sure. Down the sides of the vehicle are reasonably straight, minimal waves. Uh, this door adjustment bar could come in some to draw the door in a little bit. That's probably the only line on the car. I slammed it a couple times. I took it for a short ride earlier today because we've got snow and salt happening. It's snowing right now outside. The reverse lights appear to be in up at this time. Uh, all the other lights work. Turn signals work. Headlights, tail lights and so on and so forth. It's going to get a little bit of wind out here. I'm having to get out of the way so they can bring some cars back into the building here. Put the pause button here. All right, I might get motivated to talk even faster than I normally do because it's a uh, balmy 25 degrees out there. Hope you people in California are enjoying that. You know who you are. So, uh, let's go through the paint and body on the unit. Uh, magnets and a digital paint meter I used all the way around for the purposes of showing the future buyer uh, what the exterior body looks like um, from a uh, solid point of view. I'm saying this kind of plurally because eventually this video will become public should this buyer choose to buy or not buy. It only goes... The video only goes to the purchase uh, purchaser and uh, doesn't get released publicly on the channel until some later time. So the overall look of the truck, the Type 2, it's nice. It's uh, well sorted out. It's a reasonably decent uh, repaint with good reflective quality on the lowers as you can see. And up high the painter, he didn't want to risk too much so there's a little more orange peel up high there's a scratch right here I've got an exploded view outlining pointing out and detailing small scratches and small chips there's a scratch right there this is probably one of the worst offenses of the vehicle there's a line sized door ding somebody pulled into a uh, Kroger parking lot and uh, lambasted this thing the good thing is the paint's not broken there and probably a handy ding guy could probably work on that and make that uh, a little less noticeable. 
Again, the wheel lips are real solid. Digitally speaking, uh, the paint meter read fairly nicely throughout the vehicle. Uh, with a little filler content on the other side, I'll show you the I'll show you the results. So a little heavier orange peel here. If you can see the clarity, and then just a little bit of lack of a little more color sanding on there um, may have uh, may have been helpful. A little bit of chippage along the rain gutter. And then there's a few general scratches. They're hard to see outside, but a few general scratches where people have uh, walked up there and loaded some stuff on the roof. There's one small heel dent that I've got pointed out on the exploded view. It's right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Can you see that? Um, a little bit of uh, scratching and whatnot. A little bit of uh, paint flakage and some oxidation that could be cleaned up with some compound it's a uh, water sat there and um, it could just be cleaned up a little bit a few little rock chips boop, boop, right there uh, down the side it doesn't show to be uh, too wavy these are some long panels so certainly they can show a few uh, waves here and there and you can see a little wave or a door ding uh, style uh, crease right there. Maybe a couple of them in that door. Small little tiny tiny dent. Uh, small little dent. So again the infractions it's been used. It's been driven and it's not full of filler. They, somebody probably could have skimmed that out and blocked it out five or six times and made that go away but that's not what happened. This is what happened. A small scratch in the bumper right there. These uh, rubber seals along the marker lights, those could stand to be refreshed. The windshield probably was changed at some point, although a couple little tiny, tiny stone splatters, they're the size of a small snowflake or less, no major rock chips. We do have a wiper rub mark here and here. Somebody's wiper blades gave out. A roof showing to be in nice shape. A little aftermarket sealer was added to the top of the windshield. I'm guessing there was a a leak at some point. Uh, down the side here, just about the same, but actually blocked out just a little bit straighter, a little bit tighter. And I think that's likely because there's a small door ding right here. It's a real small little kind of line slash wave right there. Can you see it? And a little bit of uh, surface rust. Uh, in the corners of this window channel. There and there. It's not deep and I didn't want to poke at it. It's probably been there a long time. That being said, you know, it is there. I don't know how ultra concerning it is. There's a few scratches here on the roof. I'm going to show you exploded view in a minute to kind of give you an ability to freeze frame on what I'm talking about and uh, observe. Small chip on the gas door right there where your thumb goes. I think I've covered visually what uh, needs to be talked about. Doors open and close real nice. Uh, some evidence of original paint color on the inside. And a little bit of um, contamination slash surface rust. This has probably been like that for 20 or 30 years. I don't think it's um, increasing in uh, content much. There's a little bit of dry spray, uh, thinner coverage on tops of some of the panel areas. The door jams are real solid. I might need to uh, get my light back out. But the jams and the pinch welds, everything's real solid. No, no unusual swelling. Door corners are nice and clean. Bottoms of the door shells are nice and clean. And the sill in the entry area is nice and clean. Looks good from both sides. Since my hands are frozen, I'm going to leave my gloves on. I'm going to jump to the interior for a minute and then do a little more body on the other side. So seat covers were obviously recovered. Probably the rubber floor was changed and they're both in very respectable condition. Uh, this dash shows very nicely on both sides. There's some evidence of some aging of the plastic on the uh, ball vents. For the, um, for the heat. 
top of the dash is in nice shape. A few little hairline cracks on the steering wheel on the stem. Got still photos of that that just show a little better. Uh, door panel cards. These are cardboard cards that are wrapped in vinyl. And this one's nice and, uh, you know, fairly straight. Just a little bit of woo woo woo, you know. The driver's side has a little more than that. Uh, trim tag information, by the way, behind the passenger seat if you're ever looking. Uh, glove box is in nice shape. No problems to report. Parking brake appears to fire. So I'll finish up on the interior and then I'll go back to the body on this side. But you can see a little uh, warping on that door card. Nothing horrific. Windows roll up and down. Okay, there's no issues there. And again, the sill steps. Just everything looks nice. No evidence of rust swelling in the, uh, in the jams and in the pinch welds. All the same all the way around. Still photos will show you that better. Original uh, VIN sticker is present. Original Farfet Nugent sticker, and then there's the other trim tag behind the uh, driver's seat showing codes for options and whatnot. Gauges uh, for oil pressure, temperature of the oil, VDO, dash lights work, interior lights are coming on. Aftermarket Kenwood uh, stereo video tachometer and showing 53,788 miles. Cannot verify or confirm. Small yellow watering stain there in the headliner component. I'll grab my light. Actually, again, before we further ourselves on the body comments, we'll uh, do a little paint metering. Again, still photos all the way around of the meter on all different panels in various locations. Readings are anywhere from 10 to 30 all over the place, but anything below 30 is, is good. That's the thickness of roughly, uh, you know, $6 bills and mill strength. All this is nice, uh, really good down low, so no evidence of a big collision or shove in the front, and a little bit of no read right above the, oh, actually I gotta read this time. I gotta read, disregard what I just said. There we go. So a little bit of filler, I'm not, it's not beeping, I'm not getting a read there in the front end. <clears throat> it's cold, the gauge doesn't like the cold weather. I am getting a read right there, so, okay. Magnets in the cold weather. So the front end doesn't have any substantial amount of filler, meaning <clears throat> it doesn't take much to bump one of these at five miles an hour and put a quarter inch of Bondo in it to fix it. And uh, from experience, I've uh, fixed one. A little bit of uh, no read right along this area. So generally speaking, uh, paint gauge readings are good in most areas all along the vehicle. There is a little bit of filler repair here, and I suspect it's because that uh, panel down there was changed out. So there probably was a little bit of rear end damage somewhere in here, but it does not seem significant based on what I look at in the uh, frame rail and the pinch weld connections. And there's not a lot of uh, filler to speak of. Right there, there's a little bit of filler, a little bit of no filler, a little bit of filler. Okay, no reading, so a little bit of filler. It's pretty much relegated to this little corner right in here. Get up a little higher, and it's gone. Above the gas door. So, come on, baby, read. Read, work. Okay, so anyway, little filler content basically in this general area, and uh, the other areas were pretty insignificant. I'm gonna slip my glove back on there. My thumb's about to fall off. Uh, the engine fires up and seems to run nice. I drove it around the parking lot earlier. I might get one more little short drive in just to put it on this video so I don't have to combine two videos. 
wheels and tires are in pretty good shape. There's some small paint chips on the hubcaps and some small paint chips on the wheels. Nothing alarming. Tires are still in pretty good shape, probably 70 or 80 percent of the tread remaining. Rear compartment hinges hold up nicely and the rear vinyl appears to have been a redone. Some of the rear woodwork has been redone. Uh, very nice inside, a little bit of uh, older water staining in the closet. There's a baseball in there. I lifted all this uh, up, they're solid original photos, or photos rather of solid original panels, that's what I meant to say. But the van really is in um, nice condition on the inside. There's really not much to criticize or fault. So I won't waste much time uh, showing this portion of the vehicle off. I'm sure the dealer provided many uh, photos of how nice it is on the inside. Closet doors all open. Those open aftermarket speakers, a little bit of deterioration there on the vinyl trim on that shelf. Uh, there is a, a rough edge there along that uh, canvas. All the chrome uh, door handles and trim all appear to be in pretty nice shape. Nothing is any better or any worse than uh, these handles seals were pulled and again a little bit along the door tops a little bit of some uh, dry spray and kind of along the upper sills here not real easy to detect it's not not a game changer but it's a it's a nuance for sure um, the potential purchaser can freeze frame on this exploded view. This are, these are the um, various scratches, chips. There is a ledger uh, talking about what is happening. I had to mock up a pickup truck form to make it work for this van. So uh, that looks like a lot of writing, but at the end of the day, when you compare it against what's on the vehicle, you know, and there's even a few things that aren't probably marked on here. Um, still presents pretty nicely. All the glass is in nice shape. Appears to be electric rear defroster on this unit. So glass wheels, tires, underbody, suspension. Uh, is coming in? Yeah, yep. Okay, sounds good, yep. I'm gonna pull this one back in, run it one more time. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise wrapping up a pre-purchase inspection. 1970 Type 2 bus. Oh, I think he took the keys out of it. Oil light and generator light coming on appropriately as they should when I first started up. Horn working. Uh, heater slides are all functioning. Turn signals. Uh, earlier video I have shows uh, oil pressure and temp gauge. Turn signals flash both ways regarding uh, re regardless of which way I turn them on. So I'm not sure why that does it on the inside, but on the outside they work uh, appropriately and as intended. ice to drive it today. I did drive it around the parking lot and I'm going to have a short video of it uh, going around the parking lot. Finding reverse is a little bit of a challenge. There we go. The speedometer is turning. I couldn't go far enough to determine whether or not the odometer was turning. Engine oil looked uh, clean. 
Got photos of that on a white rag. It's a little bit low, needs to be topped off. I can't back up and keep my camera on. Wipers work. Anyway, back in the building. Uh, so quick recap. Again, tires, wheels, suspension, bumpers, body, paint, glass, covered, interior covered, floor and structural. Uh, the engine seems to run pretty good. Uh, shifting is a little bit double clutchish. 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 That's not a word, but it sounds good, doesn't it? So you got to clutch and then re-clutch to kind of get it in reverse. If I could have got it down the road further, I'd have a stronger opinion of how it shifts. But uh, um, I believe it probably shifts fairly functionally well. Well, thanks for hanging out, uh, being part of this uh, service and business. We appreciate it. 800-301-3886 if you're watching this video and you need a pre-purchase inspection. That's a good looking uh, Type 2 Riviera conversion, 1970. Thanks.